Hey everyone, I uh, just wanted to take a break away from the normal videos that I've been doing and give you an update on where things are at. Um, we hit a roadblock last night. Uh, the right wing that I've got sitting here behind me, we were working on getting the flaps and the ailerons aligned, which involves basically putting the, the flaps and ailerons into position and mounting them and then adjusting them so that we can get the twist out of them and get them perfectly square with the wing. Um, we ran into a problem where the flap here, the, the, the point that attaches to the hinge on the wing itself, um, this hinge bracket is the wrong hinge bracket. And um, I went back and looked through some of the, um, the recordings that I've done, uh, both the pictures and the videos. As near as I can tell, we have the right, we had the right part. We had the right part as it was labeled. Um, when we did that section of the wing, my wife and I, um, we laid out kind of an assembly line process of all of the right wing parts on one side of the bench, all of the left wing parts on the other side of the bench, and then assembled them in, uh, in conjunction with one another. Um, the, the plans, and I'll show those here, um, very clearly have, you know, the part labeled for it. And uh, uh, we didn't have any reason to question it. So um, it does show on the plans of a bend in a particular direction. I didn't have anything to compare it against. So um, I went with what was labeled. I did confirm with the factory that uh, we do have the wrong part installed. Um, there's no way to bend it into position because it is a, a pretty significant piece of the control surfaces. So at this point in time, uh, the, the uh, sling factory is sending me a new hinge bracket, which will go here. The tiny problem is, is that the only way to access that is to disassemble the wing far enough that I can access the, the rib and the hinge, remove the old hinge and put the new hinge in place. Um, a little later on here, we'll switch over to the, the stop videos that I've been doing, or the, the, the fast videos that I've been doing. Um, the wing tip is on. I'm going to have to take the wing tip off. I'm going to have to take the leading edge that's on off uh, where the taxi lights and landing lights are at and remove all of the rivets on the top portion of the wing. Um, that was pretty hard to kind of get my brain around because it makes it, that's a pretty significant step back. Uh, I probably spent two or three weeks working on that part of the, the, the wing itself. Um, in my mind, it'll probably go back together a little bit faster since it's going to be the second time around. But there's just a lot of steps to it. There's a lot of rivets that have to be removed. And uh, we have, you know, we've got to be careful because this, this is that point that we need to make sure it's all together. So, um, just wanted to provide you with a little update that uh, was out of the normal piece because this is a pretty major, and it's not a failure, but it's a pretty major issue that we're having to make a pretty big, significant step backwards uh, before we can go forward again. Um, I, I, I was just about ready to be, have the wing completed. Um, I did compare against the left wing. The left wing, is, left wing flaps and ailerons fit just perfectly. Um, the only reason I don't have those done is because the right wing has been occupying the bench while I've been working on it. Um, I grabbed the other wings and uh, tested it as soon as I realized there was a problem with this side. Um, so the plan at this point in time is to I'll leave the wing as it is because I don't have a part to replace it with. Um, I've got a rack that I built for the wings to live on once they're off the jig and it's off the jig now. So part of taking the wing tip off is to be able to put the jig back on because once I take the top skin off, then I lose the strength of the skin from the top and the wing becomes um, no longer rigid. So uh, this wing will go back on the uh, rack until that part comes in. I'll finish up the flaps and ailerons on the left wing. So those the left wing will be done just short of the fuel tanks, which of course I'm having other issues with. And um, then it's on the fuselage. So with any luck, uh, I'll have the, the fuel tanks done here soon. And um, you know, those can go on at least the left wing at this point in time. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty big step backwards, um, but uh, we'll get through it and uh, 
hopefully in the next month or so we'll we'll have it back on track so that's where we're at thanks very much here's the rest of the video <laughs>Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're kind of at a stage right now where I need to start worrying about how I'm going to manage the wings once I get them off the jig. So uh, what you're seeing here is me uh, working on a jig, uh, or not a jig, but a, a stand that I can mount all of the control surfaces onto uh, once they're complete. Uh, building this on some fairly sizable casters because uh, Obviously, I'm building well, I'm building this at my home, and uh, when these are done, everything's going to have to go onto a truck and go to get paint and then also get taken over to the airport when the wings and everything else gets put together. So um, that's underway. Um, what I'm working on here is uh, I, I hadn't put the rib nuts in for the uh, landing and taxi lights, and so I needed to put a little bit of... Um, uh, epoxy with the rib nuts so that they don't uh, uh, spin at all and I needed to get the spacers in under the wing tips so when I do put the skin on that the uh, those extra pieces were in place to get a good grip on the the wing it's or the the main spar itself uh, this is actually kind of a tricky process just because there's a lot of bending a lot more bending than I would have expected out of the the skin but uh, it just takes a little bit of time and patience to get it there. Uh, there is a extra strengthening uh, rib that goes parallel with the, uh, the the main spar, and there's there was some sort of change that it was. This one was actually shorter, and I did email the factory, and they did confirm that it's okay to go ahead and use it, but it just doesn't stick out the the same as the uh, left wing. So I had a, a, a quick pause in there while I was waiting to get confirmation that I was okay with that. But uh, this part actually went together pretty fun. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it, this is the part of the, the build that I really enjoy is uh, just kind of putting things together and it's starting to really take shape uh, as far as looking like a, a, an actual thing. So... Um, yeah, so just finishing up here, uh, starting to think about the, the process that we need to do where we're going to need to go back through and fill in all the, the rivets so that they've got the, the, they're starting to prepare for paint. Um, and this is just me coming back around and finishing up that strengthening uh, rib portion that, that I got confirmation on. Uh, the plastic that's hanging up in the back there is uh, just what I was using to catch some of the soapy water on the fuel tanks. It was just getting to be a bigger mess than what it was worth. and So I took that out from underneath the fuel tanks and cleaned it off, and it's just hanging up there to dry. Uh, fuel tanks are actually behind me still on the bench, and those are easily one of the biggest challenges that I have in this process. Um, about the time that I think that I've got them completely taken care of, I... I it's just not passing any assembly or any any resemblance of a test. So kind of slowed this one down. This is the process we go through when we change out wings. Uh, you see the rear fuselage coming in. The left wing is going on some sawhorses there uh, while we bring in the right wing, put that on the bench. And uh, then we've set the rear fuselage down on the ground so that we can then carry the left wing over and put that back into storage, which is just next door at my next door neighbor's house. And then we take over the rear fuselage. Uh, oof, this is going a little faster than I expected. Uh, this is basically we're working on getting the wing tip ready. And uh, as my father-in-law, he comes over and helps once in a while. Uh, he's very interested in the process uh, and uh, helps where he can. Um, it's a little weird putting that strap on to tighten that down. But uh, after doing the first one, it's like, okay, this, this sort of makes sense. And it gets it nice and snug in there. Slowed this down. That's how I marked out the rivet points uh, for the edge beyond the uh, where the rivets are along the leading edge and top edge um, because I needed to match drill those holes but the the fiberglass portion of the the wing tip actually sits over the top of it so I just took a piece of paper and I found some common holes that both the top uh, both the skin and the wing tip had use that as a reference point, and then just had a straight line of the paper going down. Um, so just working on getting the wing tip here. Um, every once in a while I stop and check out the instructions. And um, the wing tip I probably put on and off 
easily half a dozen times, check for fit, check for any other uh, items that need to be done. Um, I, I don't mind spending that extra time doing that just to make sure that I get a good fit. Um, and then once I get all that done, then the rivets go in, and then this is me going putting it back on, making sure that now that I've put that end rib in, does it still fit? And, you know, it does. Um, of course, I could have taken the extra step and actually soldered the, the strobe or the position light into place, but um, eh, I got it a little ahead of myself. So back off it goes, and uh, then I got to go in and fish out the, the, the position light wire and then get that wired together. Um, it, it goes together pretty good. I have got those uh, heat shrink uh, solder pieces that are all just all in one. It's a low temperature solder uh, heat shrink tube and it works really well. Um, back on again, make sure that everything fits. I'm using some tape uh, to mark the line of where the skin meets the wing tip because uh, uh, one of the other uh, TSI uh, owners suggested, and I think it's a good idea to use um, some um, Cicaflex, which is a, a, a UV-based uh, adhesive that they use mostly on boats to help with the wingtip binding. So it's a chemical adhesion because it's the glue, effectively, and then the mechanical of the, the rivets itself. Uh, so between those two, uh, that'll stand there really good. And this is just me, again, trying to figure out where the holes are at and um, just not, you can kind of see the balloon down there in the bottom. Uh, the way I'm testing this is I'm just putting a little bit of air in. I've got the air compressor turned down to like the lowest setting possible and I just kind of squirt it a couple times until the balloon inflates. Um, but, you know, I can only work on it for so long and then it gets really messy and uh, I fix a few things and then I put it back on the bench and let the new thing that I fixed seal up with the pro seal and um this process here was interesting because i thought i would i thought i had it and i put it on the wingtip and uh came out the next day and i thought i'd do just one more check before i mounted the the fuel tank on and it was like i never sealed the tank uh what had happened was is that one of the corners of the pro seal and then the flat portion of the actual skin when you lifted the skin up to set it onto the wing it separated and just created a big open gap. Uh, it was completely unexpected. But again, back on the bench it goes and uh, some more work to try to sort it out. Um, I, I knew this was going to be a bit of a bear. Um, it's a little more than what I like for it to be. I'd rather it be perfect first try. But this is, uh, you know, I'm learning a lot in the process. And uh, if I ever build another plane again, um, I'll definitely know the pain points and uh, a lot of the tricks on how to avoid any of these issues. Um, one part that I missed, and I was told probably a year, year and a half ago when I first started looking at this, that I uh, needed to wash all of the uh, rivets that were going into the, the Pro Seal with acetone before I actually assembled it with the, with the Pro Seal and completely didn't do that. So um, the one of the guys at the, the Torrance factory said, hey, you know, you need to do this, and he just suggested taking it all apart and doing it again. That's not going to happen. I'm going to try to make it work. So this is where we're starting to work on getting the uh, flaps and ailerons aligned. Um, so as per my the beginning of the video here, this is about when I discovered where the problem is at, and um, now it's sorting out, well, where did I make the mistake, and um, how do I fix it? Is it something that can be fixed? Well, I'm in this phase. Since I can't, um, back in the rack it goes, and I'll have some more updates uh, here in the next uh, couple weeks or so. Thanks for watching.